Hello, my name is Kevin Fernando. I'm a GP partner at North Berwick Health Centre near Edinburgh and also Education Director of GP Notebook Education. Welcome to our new season of GP Notebook Podcasts. Bite-sized, regular chats for all of us working in primary care as GPs, as nurses and as pharmacists. Podcasts will cover clinical tips and hacks as well as hot topics to help make our lives a wee bit easier but ultimately to help improve the lives of our patients in primary care. Follow me on Twitter at Dr. Kevin Fernando for more clinical tips and hacks relevant to all of us working in primary care and also visit www.gpnotebookeducation.com to hear about our upcoming virtual GP Notebook study groups for 2021 as well as download free resources and shortcuts. In fact, I've recently updated our GP Notebook shortcut on the use of diabetes drugs in the context of renal impairment as well as extra glycemic indications for SGLT2 inhibitors, again, in the context of renal impairment, which I hope you'll find helpful. So in this short podcast, I'm going to talk about subclinical hyperthyroidism. Now, I covered subclinical hypothyroidism in a recent GP notebook study group, focusing on a recent BMJ rapid recommendation, which strongly recommended against thyroxine for almost all adults with subclinical hypothyroidism. The important exceptions were women who were trying to become pregnant and those with a TSH over 20. However, in this podcast, I'm going to cover diagnostic and management tips as well as pitfalls to avoid for subclinical hyperthyroidism. So let's start with a typical case we might all see in primary care. So we have Fatima. She's 71 years old and she presents to us in primary care with nonspecific malaise. Past medical history is significant. Atrial fibrillation, ischemic heart disease, and osteoporosis. On examination, no evidence of any thyroid swelling. Blood pressure, 128 over 77. Pulse, 66. Irregularly irregular. Consistent with a diagnosis of atrial fibrillation. We check some bloods, FBC, UNE, LFT, HbA1c, calcium were all normal, and a total cholesterol was 3.9. And with regards to a thyroid profile, TSH was less than 0.01, normal range, 0.2 to 4.5. Free T4 was 14, normal range 9 to 21, and free T3 was 3.8 normal range 3 to 6.5. Her current medication, we, we prescribe a Pixaban 5 milligrams BD for her uh, atrial fibrillation, a Tovastatin 20 milligrams for the secondary prevention of cardiovascular disease, amlodipine 5 milligrams for her blood pressure and also ischemic heart disease, and residronate 35 milligrams weekly for her osteoporosis. Now, importantly, Fatima lives alone but is functionally independent with no real impairment of her activities of daily living. So, going by those bloods uh, I've just discussed, Fatima does appear to have subclinical hyperthyroidism. She has a suppressed TSH but normal free T4. So, what is your next step in terms of Fatima's ongoing management? Do you simply repeat her TFTs in two to four weeks? Or would you repeat them slightly longer, six to eight weeks? Or would you phone a friend? Would you refer to endocrinology urgently? Or would you perhaps take a more relaxed manner and refer to endocrinology routinely? So let's talk a little bit now about how we diagnose and manage subclinical hyperthyroidism in primary care. Now, the key references for this uh, podcast are a very helpful BMJ 10-minute consultation published during 2018 on subclinical hyperthyroidism. And NICE also updated their clinical knowledge summary on hyperthyroidism during January 2021. 
So subclinical hyperthyroidism is diagnosed when TSH is undetectable, less than 0.01, or low but detectable, less than 0.2, but importantly with normal free T3 and T4 levels. And subclinical hyperthyroidism is perhaps commoner than many of us appreciate. It affects 5% of individuals aged over 60 years of age. But again, subclinical hyperthyroidism is a great example of treating the patient, not the numbers. Because over 50% of cases of isolated low TSH with normal free hormones will return to normal with no treatment. So very important take-home message for us all in primary care. However, subclinical hyperthyroidism is potentially a risk factor for atrial fibrillation, which we know Fatima already has. So this may perhaps exacerbate her AF, and that's perhaps why we need to pay a little bit more attention to it. So what are the causes of subclinical hyperthyroidism? Autoimmune or Graves uh, disease, toxic thyroid nodules, thyroiditis, and what we previously called sick euthyroid syndrome, but we tend to call non-thyroidal illness. Now, there are also many drugs that we prescribe in primary care that can lead to subclinical hyperthyroidism. Steroids, amiodarone, dopamine agonists such as pramipexole or rapinarol, cancer immunotherapies, and antiretroviral drugs. Also, rarely pituitary disease can also lead to subclinical hyperthyroidism. So the main concern um, with subclinical hyperthyroidism is potential exacerbation of certain long-term conditions, including ischemic heart disease, atrial fibrillation, and osteoporosis. So another important key take-home message for us, if any of these specific comorbidities are present, we should discuss with endocrinology for consideration of treatment of the subclinical hyperthyroidism. So what does NICE tell us to do in terms of the, the management of subclinical hyperthyroidism in their updated clinical knowledge summary? Well, NICE tell us to assess for clinical features of hyperthyroidism. So this is quite wide and varied set of symptoms, isn't it? Rapid onset malaise, compression symptoms of shortness of breath or hoarseness caused by a toxic multi-nodular goiter, emotional lability, heat intolerance, unintentional weight loss, change in bowel habit tending to diarrhea, to name but a few symptoms associated with hyperthyroidism. So if we do exclude other causes of subclinical hyperthyroidism, so autoimmune thyroid disease, thyroiditis, non-thyroidal illness, what NICE suggests is we simply repeat TFTs in three to six months. We might consider checking them a wee bit sooner if our patient is elderly, perhaps over the age of 65, if they have a background of cardiovascular disease, or if you suspect this may well be in the context of non-thyroidal illness to see if, uh, if the subclinical hyperthyroidism persists. And once again, uh, if the presence of those high-risk comorbidities are there, such as ischemic heart disease, atrial fibrillation, and osteoporosis, we should refer with, uh, to endocrinology. And we should also refer to endocrinology if subclinical hyperthyroidism persists when we recheck those TFTs in three to six months. We mustn't also miss any more sinister uh, diagnoses. We should also refer down a suspected cancer pathway if the person in question has a thyroid nodule or goiter and malignancy is suspected. So, for example, if we palpate the neck and we can feel a hard or irregular goiter uh, or if there's a presence of regional lymph adenopathy. So who might our endocrinology colleagues treat? Well, treatment is usually offered to those with a TSH persistently less than 0.1, especially if individuals are over the age of 65, postmenopausal women, 
or individuals at risk of osteoporosis or with established osteoporosis or individuals with multiple cardiovascular risk factors or again established cardiovascular disease or those who are symptomatic of uh, hyperthyroidism. These individuals, our endocrinology colleagues, would tend to treat. So bringing us back to Fatima then, her bloods do suggest subclinical hyperthyroidism because her TSH is less than 0 0.01, uh, which is suppressed, but she has normal free T3 and T4 levels. So what's my next step? Well, actually, I did refer Fatima to endocrinology routinely because her comorbidities include atrial fibrillation, ischemic heart disease, and osteoporosis, all, uh, all of which are potentially exacerbated by her subclinical hyperthyroidism. So that brings me to the end of this brief podcast. Thank you all for listening. I hope you found this podcast helpful. Please make sure to subscribe to our podcasts, which are available on all major platforms. Get in touch via social media. I'm on Twitter at Dr. Kevin Fernando or email me on kevin at gpnotebook.co.uk if you have any questions, comments or ideas for future podcasts. You should also visit us at gpnotebookeducation.com to hear about our upcoming virtual GP Notebook study groups for 2021, as well as download free resources and shortcuts to make our lives a wee bit easier, but ultimately to help improve the lives of our patients in primary care. Mm -hmm.